So, um, now first of all, it's a bit like a Renault actually, and until you're told which is the front and which is the back, you wouldn't know. This is the front, and that's, you know, the, the lead trails out the back, and because you're watching it go, and there's the controls on the back. Um, but now for safety and looking after the thing, uh, the first thing I notice is um, that this is a pretty heavy duty plastic, but it's not the kind of plastic that's pliable and bendable. Um, so if you drop this from the height, or just about any height really, because of the fact that it's so heavy, it's going to get to the bottom pretty quick. So if you drop that, you're probably likely to crack the plastic. So you, when you're carrying it around, you know, be aware of what you're doing and don't drop it. Um, because if you drop it or drop something on it, um, that plastic's going to crack. And that's going to put it out of action for a while. What else? There are fuses, fuses that go in there if you need to. There should be spare fuses in the box. Um, and that's about it. Let's look a little bit closer. So, okay, it's looking from the other side. So, when you're starting off, it, when you're starting off, that wheel rolls over and then it goes up to about here somewhere and then you lift it up. Do you see that? It goes into that spot there. Lift it up, make sure it's right pushed to the other side. You can see it lines up. Mine's up here, and there you go. And on the other side, it looks different. So on the other side, this is the front here, and it goes over over the front wheel. And you make sure it's tucked in the other side as far as it goes. And then on the job, you just swing it back and forth down there a meter or back or something just to make sure that this is set up to go in the right direction that's parallel to um, the edges something like that anyway Right, g'day, Sam King here from King Agricultural and this is our uh, joiner for joining um, plastic so that's um, polyethylene, this is HDPE um, half a millimetre uh, 500 microns and um, it's done a pretty good job. Now this is my uh, third run through. The first um, time I tried it, uh, this way first, uh, that was a failure. I had it aligned wrong, you can see how it skidded off the edge there. So it's supposed to have two points of heat contact that welds together. And it's got to be hot enough so that it fuses them. Now you obviously can see here, it just wasn't enough and it just pulled away quite easily. Then I had another go and you can see it was better so I turned the heat up and it mounted a bit better but it did better on this side than that side that side just stripped right off this one here was a bit better there not so good there so then I just turned it up a bit more there's the one that worked again um, maybe I could possibly go try do another try going down a little bit um, uh, down with the temperature just a little bit um, but what I found is that um, okay as soon as it heats up like the second that that turns from red which means it's heating when it's green that green light ready to go and you've got to um, put it into gear and go for it straight away because if you wait for just a few seconds uh, even I think they only, probably only waited three seconds and that burnt a hole right through there's a little wee pinhole um, through there that you can see so that's why it's necessary to do a few strips um, as a test before you go and it's no good to just, for me to just say okay well for this kind of plastic that I'm selling um, it's whatever settings you've actually got to um, do it because the temperature on the day when you're working with it um, will have a bit to do with you know what temperature on the setting on here that's going to work best um, obviously if the, if the plastic's really hot it's going to take a lot less to heat it to the required amount. Better note down so I've got a record of this test what the settings were about 260 heat 
260 speed. Oh, what do you call it? One and a third Marcus. There you go. That's that test. And is there a pinhole? Yeah, there was a little wee pinhole here because I did wait like about three seconds before I um, put the thing on that. So the, the next one, if I want to make it um, a bit um, bit more fusion, so that it looks like this, and uh, that's a lot tighter, I think. Um, then what I could either do is I could take up the temperature or take down the speed. Um, I would I, I would probably advise when you're new to this sort of thing that you start off with going fairly slow um, and then when you're comfortable with it you've done it quite a bit of runs with it then you can do a test and work on, on making it faster because it's not just having the right speed to get the right weld it's also managing it as it goes along yeah because obviously you know when it starts to go fast you, you need, I think you need a bit of more experience going slower before you run this thing um, on a quicker speed because, yeah, you know, as you go you'll see that you can actually just make minor changes if it starts to go a fraction of mil off this way and a little bit like that, you know, or, or it looks like the, um, the plastic's sort of running off a bit, you can sort of slowly push it in and, and away as you go um, because if it gets too far off you can't change it, you know, you can't change that a lot quickly, otherwise it might have a bit of a um, crease or something in it. Um, so, yeah, better to better to work with slow until you've got some experience. So, the next one I'm going to try, I'm going to try 260 and I'm going to take the speed down to 0.8. Right now, um... So this test here was, it turned out pretty good, uh, but I think it's better uh, when you get that kind of thing happening. So that's a really good melt, uh, melts it in really good. Um, if you go too, too hot above that, then it sort of melts it out too much, but that's really good. Uh, this still works, um, but I think when you get that, um, that ridgy thing there um, that shows that it's a really good melt, uh, much better fusion. Now, also, you'll notice on this one it went a bit off. So, there I was about um, 107, I measured it 107 from there to there, and 75 from there to there. And I still got the welds, uh, the two uh, weld lines uh, in there, but it would have run off. But what I'm going to do is do a test to see if it actually should be um, 100 millimeters, as it says in the um, in the specifications and in the um, operator's manual, or whether it should be something like 95 or 90, something like that. Um, so I'm just going to test that by. I've got. I don't know what else is good for marking this stuff. Maybe engineer's chalk, or some of those fluid chalks or whatever. I'm just marking this at 100. And especially for your first couple of runs, it's not a bad idea to mark it. Like even if you just marked it um, for the first bit, maybe once every um, half a metre and then further down the line, you know, once every couple of metres sort of thing. So you can just see that, um, that you know, your, your plastic's sitting right and um yeah so it's not sort of running off and going skew if but anyway so let's get the other piece for the other. actually to me it looks as if looks as if something more like 95 or 90 would be better I would be inclined to uh, mark it out as 90 uh, because if you go like 100 
like that sort of thing, that's 100 there. See, it's sort of running off there like that. I've got this, the top one. I've got the top one forced over so that it's hitting 100. On the bottom one, it runs off. And yeah, so I, th I think if you made it something like 90 to start off with, yeah, if you're trying to force it to hit 100, and then it could skew off. So I think 90 is going to be better. And I'll just mark 90 by eye Or 92 or something. Okay, make sure the bottom one is on the bottom and the top one is on the top. So the right one is on the top, left one is on the bottom, and I'm going to um, start it off so it lines up with that 90mm line. Right, this might be the final go. See how it goes. So I've got this 260 and that adjusted to 0.8. I'm going to turn it on. And make sure you're ready to go as soon as it hits green, chuck it into gear. It's like a launch control thing. It's winding up the turbines. Straight into gear. Now you've just got to keep an eye on it as it goes. Because as soon as you're off it, disengage that. Hey, dog, shut up. Hang on, I'll just go and sort the dog out. Okay, so I've just shut the dog up and come back. Um, and this has been waiting for a row about a minute. So I can turn that off. Okay, so that's that's a pretty good one. Um, I think very similar to that one. This one looks like there's a bit more melt than that one there, um, and possibly I could maybe turn the um, temperature down just a fraction. Um, but it's pretty good. Now I think. Um, you know, the, the, the temperature control on this is, is pretty good. Um, so it's probably going to stay constant as, as it goes way down the line. But still there's a potential that maybe um, after a few metres or um, whatever, the temperature may heat up a little bit more. So just as it's going along, um, keep, a look, keep an eye on this sort of pattern and the way it's forming. And if you see, it's, it looks like it's burning out a bit. Like maybe getting a bit too hot, like see that spot there when it sort of sat there for well, like a nanosecond, like a second before it, I started doing that run, and it sort of burns out a bit. So way before it gets anything like that, um, if it starts sort of heating up a bit, then turn the controls, to, you know, turn the um, the uh, temperature down a little bit as you go. That's what you can do. Now another thing, look at the line alignment. And it's probably not a bad idea when you do your tests um, to do to run a line like that. I just used a um, uh, one of those kind of markers, but there's all sorts of markers you might be able to use. I don't know if engineering chalk works, 
uh, maybe the the engineering die works um, but anyway so that's the 100 mark that's a 90 mark and I've started off at around about 93 or something 90 yeah something like that and it's run off a little bit now obviously when you've got two big pieces of plastic the way they're sitting and the way they're weighted down they're going to stay together a lot better than you know trying to hold two little wee bits of, of, of plastic like that um, but yeah, you just got to make sure that this is running along the centre. And as it goes, um, you will be able to correct it just a little bit here and there as you go along. Push it this way. You know, you can make minor corrections with this, but you can't sort of do a big correction like that. Otherwise, you might get a bit of a kink. So just sort of, um, you know, just as it goes along, minor corrections, and you'll be all right. But um, the the default safety position is by you know, like when you're rolling along like this, anything goes wrong, or you want to change it, or it's burning, or something, whatever, you know, just go like that, disengage it. And then you might have to realign it and, you know, come back again or something like that, just turn it around a bit or something. But that's the default position, because um, that disengages the plates for heating. But yeah, do some tests until you're happy, and it's probably a good idea to do a full run test like maybe a, a good like three meters or even six meters a longer piece to test so when you're buying your stuff make sure you buy just a little bit more um, so you've got enough for testing um, so you're happy with your um, happy with your welds and away you go so pretty good machine isn't it so this one I'm just going to mark that for reference Left control was on 260 and the other one was on 0.8. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple of, try a couple of different variations with uh, temperature and speed. Um, well, if you're going to be doing several joints, like a, a decent sized project, it's probably good to have um, two different options with speed. So maybe you start off for the, the first one or two or three runs, you know, going slow. But then that might be really, really annoy you, and you might want to do the next, all of the next runs um, a lot quicker. So then you'd want to know um, what temperature you would need for that higher speed. I'm going to go 95. So, you always got to test all these sort of machines that you get because it says 10 centimeters, but really, no, I think that's wrong. Here we go. I'm going to try um, hotter and I'm going to go to what's that? 300 there. I'm going to go right up to 2. I might go to 3, 320 and 2. Looks good, feels good. And that goes over the top of the wheel, like that, and you finally get it. Right. Now, another thing, when you've got, got it there, so those, these sheets should be sitting nice and flat and in a good alignment, because they're sort of... Uh, the the, um, the overlap is correct for you know long distance and then before you engage it turning anything on 
you just roll this back and forward down there a bit like a trial thing and then bring it back then you know you're it's actually facing the right way and it's not off like this or off like that okay so I'll just put that back there again get on to about there okay what have we got about 310 and 2 turn that on get my coffee and my bag of biscuits out the road As soon as it goes green, up straight away. Shake it into gear. Ready for the green launch control button. This is Formula One stuff. We're waiting for the launch control to ring in. As soon as it hits green, we're on launch control. It's getting quite hot, but we're going a lot faster, that's way faster than before. And as soon as you're out, that goes up, disengage. And that's a pretty good join and Mr. Kink there, but that's that's really good. And when it started off, because it was started off really quick, and I didn't wait a second, so I didn't get that melt out thing there like what you can get if it starts off too slow. But that was pretty good, but it did run off a little bit. But and you can see how um yeah, I, I, I think you're better off, unless you get yourself a good amount of experience, like more experience than me, obviously, um, before you think about going to a speed like two. More like the round about the one, or even less is better, um, until you've, you've got a good amount of experience in managing the front and keeping it in alignment, but there you go anyway. So it's a pretty good machine, very good actually. It's not going to um, fail at all. So look at that. There's no way that's coming apart. And if you can get it to rip, it might rip along the edge. So I've got that to rip there like that. Um, but it won't rip on the actual joint. try one more um, I'm going to go to uh, 290 and 1.1 we've been green for a while and just bring it over here okay launch control And I'm going to speed that up as I'm going. Look at that. As you're going, you can speed it up or slow it down. See there? I can slow it right down. Okay, and that goes disengaged. So look at that. So as you're going, it just shows you how you can vary things, so it was going at, um, I did a reasonable heat, that was 290, um, starting off at 1.1 speed, and then I sped it right up to about 2, and yeah, that's still good adhesion, but you're not getting that ripple thing, which is like optimum um, adhesion, and then um, I sped it up just the last bit. I couldn't see what was going on there just in case it was, I don't know. But anyway, so look at that.
see that? Now, with a bit of ripping, I was able to pull that bit where it was smooth, but where you got that ripple bit there, it's, you just can't, you just can't pull it. It won't pull there, it'll fail next to the join, but not on the join. So there you go, that's the machine. Here yeah, the temperature in this room is pretty much on 20 degrees. So room temp 20 degrees. That's just a, a indicator I guess. So I'm gonna pop that in the um, box with stuff so you can see what um, a good weld looks like. And at that room temperature of 20 degrees, I was going in a speed of 0.8 and a um, heat of 260 degrees. So there we go, pretty cool. Yeah, and especially if you've got a big job with lots of runs, um, it's good to, to do uh, to work out a couple of different speed, maybe two, maybe even three different speed settings. So um, you, may, you might start off the first run something like this, but then you've also done a test to work out, um, you know, what if you go to something like speed 1.5 or 2, uh, what would be the corresponding um, uh, temperature that matches that to give, to, to give you the right thing, if you want to go much faster. Um, so then you start off a run, you're going fast, or you might start off slow, and then you adjust it to your um, fast setting, and then away you go. And you could be going fast, you could be running at your fast mode, what you worked out is a good good mode for that, and then if you find things are not going too well, you can just quickly slow it down and change that too.